Hello, and welcome to the living room, which means audio video equipment. I'm pretty excited because today I am unboxing and setting up the Marantz Cinema 50 AV surround receiver. It's going to go down there. Now, before we get to that, I'm gonna tell my story about why I bought it. If you don't care about why I bought it, if you just wanna see it, skip to the next chapter, which will be the official unboxing. And then the chapter after that will probably be a thing about the cables that I have, I have bought to replace. And I'll explain that as we go. And then the chapter after that will be the actual setup. Let me start telling you about the story. And again, if you just care about what's in the box, skip to the next chapter. So here's the box. I had a, a Morant 7010, which I bought back when it was new, which was what, like seven years ago, seven or eight years ago. And I, I replaced a Sony receiver. And the main reason I got that one was for Dolby Atmos. But then after a couple of years, I got a TV that did Dolby Vision. And so I needed a receiver that would pass through the Dolby Vision. So I upgraded to the 7012, which would have been about five years ago, about 2017, towards the end of 2017. But you know, th this is, when you live on the bleeding edge, this is the kind of stuff you're going to. Then out came the PS5 with the 4K 120. Well, the 7012 doesn't support 4K 120. So I need a new receiver. Oh, and here's where things got dicey. Because of COVID and then the supply chain thing, Marantz really delayed their next receiver line. So the, 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 their current receiver for like the last two and a half years was the 7015 and 8015, but I was waiting for the next one and waiting and waiting. So I have never seen 4K 120 on, on my PS5 because I didn't have a receiver that would pass that through. The TV will handle it, but the receiver did. But then Morantz finally announced their new cinema series and the Cinema 40, which is the one, which I know the numbers go down as the price goes up. But Cinema 40, which is the $3,500 model, is really the one I wanted. And so I said, well, it's coming out like next year. Like they said the beginning, although I've seen videos more recently that say maybe it's gonna be like by spring or summer. I said, well, I can still wait. The reason I started thinking about upgrading besides the, the new stuff was that my HDMI ports on the 7012 started failing. One of my HDMI ports stopped working, so I had to move things and drop an input, and then another one. And just more recently, and the reason I have this on behind me, it's not to see my pretty face real big, although, huh? is that the, the, the input that, I think it's the, well, I don't know what it is, but want, something is starting to cause HDCP errors. Just briefly, it flashes up, and that's why I have this on to see if maybe it would flash up behind me while I'm talking, where it says HDCP 2.2 error, and you have to unplug and replug everything, but then it goes right away and comes back. So it's clearly a little intermittent thing. I said, I can't wait until next year, because this is I'm, I'm running out of inputs. I I'm, I'm, I'm already had to lose two things, and now I'm about to lose a third thing. Fortunately for me, just about when this started happening with the HDCP, all but the high-end receivers started shipping. By the way, hard to find. I ended up getting it from Crutchfield. They were the only ones that had it in stock. Amazon didn't have them. b and Photo didn't have them. They're all back-ordered. Crutchfield had one for me and sent it right out, and it just got here. Well, I actually got here a couple of days ago, but I've been waiting to do this. That's how I came to buy this. I need the 4K 120. Oh, and the beauty of this receiver is the 4K 120 and or 8K 60 all the HDMI inputs on the back of this support it. And of course the out and the TV supports it. So I will be able to really do 4K 120 on anything that can support it, which I think right now is just my PS5, but eh, it's just the beginning. So it's a really great receiver. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it as we, as we go through the unboxing. Now comes the horrible part of the video, which if you've been watching the channel, you know, I'm gonna have to do this on the floor and I hate getting down on the floor. But let's get it down the floor. By the way, it's 30 pounds. It's Dolby Atmos. 
IMAX DTS, DTSX, RO3D, IMAX Enhanced, Odyssey, Direct. Uh, the Direct is not available just yet. That's going to be in a firmware update next year. Dolby Vision, 8K, a Heos, a Pandora, Napster, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Tidal. So it'll get all this stuff off the internet. So it's basically everything you need. Now, when you open the box, there's this lovely little box here, which has the new remote, redesigned remote. The, the, the 7000 series, all of them had the same remote. They include batteries, I like that. The little antennas for the Wi-Fi. The little manual, some antennas. It is a receiver, so it does have an FM receiver in it. Oh, and this is, I love this, labels for your wires. So as you wire things up, you can put the labels on it. Oh, and this is the stand, the little cardboard stand tripod for the microphone for setting up the speakers. Also in the box is the big fat power cable. And here's that little, like, the little Odyssey microphone that goes onto that little tripod that I showed you. So you put this on the little tripod, it's got a little microphone, and you put it in your listening position, which for me is back over there. And then it will calibrate the speakers for you. Here's the thing. And even though it weighs 30 pounds, I'm going to pick it back up and put it back up here. And here it is. So there's the front. We'll get a little higher angle. Here are the buttons along the front. But if you're like me, you don't really care about the front as much as you want to see the back. So here are all the inputs on the back. In the upper left, you have upper left and upper right, you have the little gold, those are the antenna for the Wi-Fi. Then you've got some digital audio in, which I won't be using. Ethernet. Then we have six HDMIs, all 4K, 8K 60 or 4K 120 capable. And then two HDMI outs that are also 4K 120, 8K 60 capable. And then a 4K zone two, I, I never use zone two. And then of course it has eARC, which we will, we will be finding out today if that's gonna work. Now, the big difference between, oh, it also has the phono input down here and the ground for my turntable. Now, what's gone are all the non-HDMI inputs. The, we just have a few audio type things and then all the other video stuff, the three color. And then we have all the speakers across the bottom, all the speaker terminals, which again, will either unscrew or you can use banana plugs. I will be using banana plugs because I have I have my speakers. I, when I got when I flip, went from the 7010 to the 7012 and I started messing with the speakers, I said, no, 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 I got banana plugs. And this is the beauty of upgrading to the same brand receiver. The layout of the speaker terminals is exactly the same as Katina Eats Kilo say. There's nothing to it but to do it. And I already have my hair pulled back because I didn't want it falling down in this stuff. Now, when I put this in originally, the original one, I left enough slack in the cables that I can pull it all the way out of the cabinet, which of course you need to do to get to all the stuff on the back. By the way, this thing on top is a little uh, fan to keep the, to pull air through and keep this cool, because it does run a little hot. I got this off of Amazon. If I can, if they still make them, I'll put it on there. But it shows you the current temperature and you know what it and, and then it has set temperatures that when it hits the set temperature. So you see all my speakers hanging out down there. Okay, now I'm going to do something that may horrify people. I'm going to unplug all of the HDMI cables without keeping track of them because, again, because of my problems, a lot of them are in the wrong spots anyway. This is the monitor out, which I will not be using. So now I'm gonna do exactly what I did the last time when I upgraded from the 7010 to the 7012. 
which I just stack them on top of each other. Unplug the power cord, which I believe I can reuse. Yes. And now we will just I have to keep them in order. So one, two, three. Yeah, these should be over here. So the speaker setup is complete. Oh, not quite. Look down here. Subwoofers. That's the other thing about this, uh, this the new box, is I had two subwoofers, but they weren't, they were just mirrored. But here we have four unique subwoofer. So I now have nothing attached to the back, so I can drop this off and pull the other one out from under it. Uh, while it's out, might as well put on my little Bluetooth antennae. Okay, so now we're gonna do the guided setup. So we'll select the language Anglais. Yeah, I have all those things. Got my speakers all placed. Do I have more than nine? I do not. I have, a, I have exactly nine. I have a 5.2.4. Okay, I've got this. Even, look, it's, it's telling you how to connect speakers. I mean, this is really, you know, for idiots. Yes, I do. I've already connected it. Yes, I do. Already connected it. Already connected it. Front height, my rear height. Now here's a, a thing, it, it, you can either just, like with the, the old receiver just sent the same subwoofer signal to both, but this receiver can, especially if you have four in the four corners of the room, it can send the low notes associated with the different sides, so I'm gonna do that. They're both front, left and right. Okay, I'm gonna skip speaker calibration, I may come back, actually, no one ever wants to see that. It will, it'll play tones and, and set all the speakers, but you don't really need to see me do that. I have connected the antennas. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and call it the Cinema 50. We're on central time here. Now I saw this in another video. You can say no here, but then still choose to use ARC to send the TV signal back. Okay, so this is gonna be my TiVo. Now would be the time for my little cable talk. So one of the problems with 4K uh, 120 is you need cables that support it, and not all cables do. I found on YouTube, and I will link this below, Linus Tech Tips about a year ago bought 50-something cables and tested HDMI cables and tested them to see if they would work, and like 16% of them failed. But what Linus said was that the one cables that had zero failures were infinite cables. And, the, and by the way, they even have the little HDMI ultra high speed, ultra certified sticker, which you have to actually have to get tested. So, and by the way, they're not that expensive. Uh, I, I'll link them below. So I got a bunch of these. So that's, gonna, that's why I just unplugged all my HDMI because I didn't care because I'm going to replace them all. But the more important one I'm going to replace is the long cable that, come, that goes to the TV, into the wall, down through the wall, back out and over here. So it has to be fairly long. 
And in Linus's video, which again will be linked below, you will see that the longer the cable, the lo less likely it is to survive. And it says if you want a longer cable length, like over 10 to 15 feet, you need active optical cable. I am not gonna thread it through the wall just yet. I'm gonna make sure it works outside of the wall. Display, so this is the end that goes up here. And this is source. Oh, before we move on, Okay, I can hear that. I'm not getting any sound out of the rear heights. Okay. Okay, we'll worry about that later. Set up the inputs. Next. Oh, well, this is nice. Look, it, it saw that it's a TiVo and says, do I want to call it TiVo? Yes, I do. There is no need for y'all to watch me run all these cables through and connect all the other 19 devices down here. But we're gonna go away for, um, for a minute and when we come back, I'll have all the inputs set up and we can go from there. Three days later. Well, that could have certainly gone better. When you last saw me, I was about to dive under there and replace all my HDMI cables and wire everything back up, all my inputs. Well. That took about an hour, much longer than I intended, because there was there, it's a rat nest under there. But as you can see, I now have all my inputs set up. So I have my TiVo, my Roku, my Oppo Blu-ray, my PS5, the Xbox One. I had to drop the Apple TV because this receiver only has six HDMI in and the old one had seven. Now the Switch is actually a Switch, but has the, it actually has the Nintendo Switch on it, plus my PS3, plus a couple of other legacy things, HD DVD. That's HDMI one through six. Over here on the right, where it says input mode, the default was, all, was to all auto, which means it would pick whatever had a signal coming in. But I know that for inputs one through six, it's only gonna be, the audio is only coming in through HDMI, so you can change that. So I set it just to HDMI. I left the CD on auto, and of course the TV audio out goes out to eARC. Well, that explains an hour. What about the rest of the time? The next hour was spent trying to fix the problem I had with the rear heights not working. And I tried everything. I re-plugged, I, re I, 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 I tried everything you could do. And then I remembered that there's like one other unboxing and setup of, of a Cinema 50 on YouTube, and I went and watched that. He had a problem with his Cinema 50. His problem was different. It wasn't the rear heights. He had to do a firmware update. I went, of course, firmware update. Let me show you where that is. So you go to setup, general, And then you have to scroll all the way down onto the next pa second page there. And there's your firmware. And you check for update. I'm good. I just installed the latest one a couple of days ago. So that was another hour. And you said, okay, so you're now two hours later, but why is it days later? After I finished all that, I came in here and just shot this part that I'm shooting right now, except the sun had gone down because it had been so long and the lighting was terrible. Not that it's that much better now, but it was really terrible. But I went, well, I can live with it. You know, so, so the last few minutes of the video aren't so good. Well, when I go to edit, I find out, no, the, the audio is also bad. So bad video, bad audio equals not gonna be in the video. So I'm back here reshooting. Now, in the meanwhile, I have run the cable through the wall, the, the very expensive, the $100 cable with the active optical repeater. And by the way, everything's been, and everything's been working fine for several days. I've used all the inputs, everything's worked fine. I also did the Odyssey, Go back here to the general setup assistant, remember. I did speaker setup, 
but I didn't do the calibration, that the Odyssey calibration. But I did the next day. By the way, the Odyssey setup takes, it's about 20, 30 minutes depending. Oh, let me, okay, my first tip was update your firmware before you start doing anything. My second tip, when I did the Odyssey setup, it somehow decided based on its own whims that I only had one subwoofer. But in the, I can't show you because it won't let me go back into the Odyssey setup unless I plug in the Odyssey microphone and then for all I know it'll start all over again. I don't want to go through all that again. But so if you run the Odyssey setup, you may have to go back to the beginning of the Odyssey setup and tell it, no, I have two subwoofers and they're directional. There's a left and a right or front and back, depending on your setup. You, but you're, if you have more than one subwoofer, you're going to have to explain that to Odyssey because it doesn't automatically check, apparently. But after you run the Odyssey setup using the included microphone, it will calculate all the distances of your speakers from your listening position, where you put the little microphone. And you can see my front left over here is about 17 feet, my front right is about 13 feet. And actually look, it, it, they're fairly close. The center is about 14 feet. So it calculated all these correctly, but it decided my front center and right speakers are what they call large, which basically means they'll do bass. But like I said, it's been working great. I haven't had any issues. Everything's been fine, all the speaker setup and the, the calibration, it's a pain in the butt, but you're gonna have to do it if you want your speakers to sound right. Now you can do it manually. You can go in and enter in all, all those distances and feet. That I don't know why you would when you get your little microphone. I'm pretty happy. It does everything the old one would do. Plus, oh, ah, but here's why I, here's one of the, the reason I bought this. Look at this, variable refresh rate. Direct from the PlayStation's mouth. Current video output signal is 4K, variable refresh rate from 48 to 120 hertz. So I got my 4K 120, which is the reason, one of the reasons I bought this. I don't know if I mentioned this before. The receiver is HDCP 2.3. Everything else I own is 2.2. So this is a little bit of future proofing. So I got what I wanted out of this receiver. I've got the 4K 120, or better yet, I have the variable refresh rate. So as the games speed up and slow down, as the frame rate changes, the TV can keep up all the way down to 48 hertz and all the way up to 120 hertz. The one little issue, it's not really an issue, it's just it, when you switch sources. So we're on, we're on PS5. Now I'll switch to the Roku and see it blanks for a fair amount of time. So anytime you switch between inputs, you have a long blanking interval where I guess it's handshaking, but it's longer than it was with the old, with the, with the old receiver. The old receiver, it would be pretty much instantaneous when you'd flip. You didn't have that long delay. But we, well, you did when you went to the PlayStation because I don't know what it is about PlayStation, but they take a while. That is the Marantz Cinema 50. It's a great receiver. I'm really pleased with it. I think it's prettier. It does everything I need it to do, and, I, and the only problem I have really had, really, was because I didn't update the firmware first. So, PSA, update your firmware before you start doing all this setup nonsense so that you don't have to do what I do and spend an hour trying to figure out what's wrong when all that was wrong was that I didn't have current firmware. But there is God of War Ragnarok in all of its glory. Yeah, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous game. So that's the Marantz Cinema 50. I've always recommended Marantz receivers. I've always liked Marantz receivers. I've always thought they were better looking than Denon. I would go buy one of these if I were you. It's a great receiver. If you're, if you're, look, if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about a receiver. Well, this is a good one. So thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye-bye.